Welcome, Synthio X Academy. I'm Roy. I'm Arthur. This is Arthur, and uh, we are teaching how to build, um, well, all sorts of things, but we're now focusing on <coughs> instruments and interaction in interaction with instruments, in particular, human-centered design, if you guys are into uh, design jargon. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is getting started the basics of building something interactive. Um, my background is in design and music, and Arthur's background is in hacking the hell out of things and building all sorts of wacky, crazy things with all sorts of... Hardware? Hardware, yeah. yeah. Mostly hardware? Yeah. And uh, yeah, we decided we're going to make a little video because um, our students will probably need it. So if you are our student, you're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so what we're going to do today is to try and work with light-dependent resistors. These ones? Yeah, we just realized that this camera is not really getting up pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Show it uh, It's too much. And... There we go. There we are. It's tiny. It's tiny. But super powerful. Yes. And what, what can we do with this? Anything really. Um, this just measures light. It's light. all it does. But the cool thing is it doesn't, doesn't measure light as in a number that it sends to your computer, but it measures light as resistance. So you have resistors, things that block the flow of electricity. Um, and this little thing, <laughs> there they are. Somehow, are you going to recognize that? It's pretty uh, stupid. And this little thing uh, does the same thing as those resistors, but then based on the amount of light that comes across it. So the more light, the less or more resistance. I don't really know, but it doesn't really matter because you're, you're using it. You're going to decide what's going to happen based on the amount of light. Cool. So in a sense, this could also be like a um, distance sensor. Sort of, yeah, even a, a movement one. sensor. So, a movement sensor. Um, I've used these to put like a, a laser diode across from it, and then the laser shines on this, so it has a high value. And then when you move across, you block the laser, which blocks the light. So, and then you have a movement sensor. Yeah, cool. You create okay. like a laser grid in your house. Cool yeah. games. Um, yeah, so we're going to get started with, first of all, setting this thing up. Yes. What is this? That's a microcontroller, one of many. But this microcontroller is really cool because it's one of the microcontrollers that can produce sound, like real analog moving a speaker sound. Um, and it's also really easy to use. So I think there's a lot of ways that you can create sound with microcontrollers. But this one is easy and easy is nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So how do we how do we how do we set this up? I see a breadboard here. What what do we do? Do we just plug this in? We can already plug it in. Yeah. So uh, a breadboard for people that are working with this for the first time is a really easy way of connecting cables to this microcontroller because as we could see it had like long legs and usually we would solder things to the legs but now with the breadboard we can just stick it into the breadboard and we will show it later in the video and we can connect as if we're soldering wires but then without soldering which is really nice but before we're going to do anything cool we have to start with the same thing that i think you have to do with any device if it's a microcontroller a new webcam your new xbox it doesn't really matter uh, we just need to set it up um, and see if it works because otherwise we're going to go through all the hassle of creating something and then it doesn't work and we don't know if it's the microcontroller or our software that's the problem right so to test this out we're going to connect it to the computer and then uh, upload some data to it Flip. yeah usb usb right got it so now it's connected to the computer and if it's a brand new one it might be that there's a light blinking, uh, but it might also not be. And a light doesn't mean a thing. It's just a diode programmed to blink. If it's not blinking, it doesn't mean yours is broken because mine is also not blinking. And I'm pretty sure it's not broken. <laughs> pretty sure it's not completely sure. Let's, let's try it. Let's, let's test see. it out. So uh, on the computer, we're going to start with installing the software that we need to program this microcontroller. Um, which is usually Arduino software. 
Arduino. A lot of microcontrollers are compatible with the nice software from Arduino. But this specific device is the Teensy, and they've created their own software called Teensy Duino. And if we Google Teensy Duino and just go to the first source, we get this nice page explaining a lot of stuff about this software. And it has a small button for downloading the software. Um, I'm currently working on a Macintosh computer, which means I just need to download the Teensy software. If you're on Windows, carefully read these instructions and first download the Arduino installer and then download the Teensy Duino installer in the top here. And also read the small note, which says that you should not download the Windows app if you're working with a Microsoft computer. So. You, you got me confused. You said that we are supposed to download the Windows app. Yes, but the Windows app from the Microsoft Store oh, okay. is incompatible. So um, <laughs> when we go to the Arduino site um, and they have their software page, there's the Windows app. You do not want to download that. You just want to download one of these and the top one is the most easiest. So Windows 7 and newer. Confusing point number one. Do not press this button. Show counter here. <laughs> cool. Okay. Uh, all right. So um, then if you're a Macintosh, you can just download the software, install it. I've already installed it. Um, and if everything goes well, if you're on Mac, you can open your TNC Duino software. And if you're on Windows, you can open your Arduino software and it will work the same from now on. Okay. How does it look like when you just open it for the first time? Right. So when you open it, the TNC Duino or Arduino, you mm -hmm. get a small loading screen. Uh, and when it's done loading, it shows you an empty sketch. This is it. Right. Um, and this is actually already a working piece of code. We can upload this to the TNC or Arduino or any microcontroller, and it won't do anything. But okay. That's because there's no instructions in it. So nothing commanding this to work, which is nice because if there's instructions in it, it could be wrong. So I always start with an empty sketch and see if I can upload it to this microcontroller because that's how we're going to work from now on. We're going to create code on the computer and then we're going to send it to the microcontroller. It's going to get installed on the microcontroller like any piece of program or software. Mm -hmm. And then it will run off on the microcontroller on its own. So you can even just plug it out of the computer, just connect it to any power supply, even a power bank. And then you can just create like a wireless instrument running on battery power. Cool. But what you're saying now is that it literally has no code in, but it yes. has some code in the background. Well, so like you are uploading nothing into this. Yes. And how do you know if it works? Because the program will, says it, will, will show it. So if I go, First, I will have to select the correct microcontroller because, as I said, the Arduino software supports tons of microcontrollers. Yeah. Um, so it depends on which Teensy you have bought or which microcontroller. But when you go to the tools board, you can select tons of boards. You can even install more boards yeah. through the boards manager. I um, actually have here another board. So this will also show there on the Arduino. Probably if you install it. If you install it. Yes. Okay, cool. So there's always getting started instructions for any microcontroller. Um, and you have to just select the right one. So if I go to the boards, I have the Teensy Duino mm -hmm. set of boards. And for me personally, it's the Teensy 3.6, but you might have a 4.1 or a 4.2 or a 3.0. Yeah, 3.2. I think most students work with a 3.2. That's like a $20 one. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So you select the 3.6. And then you go back to tools and this should be by default on serial. And it's the way it communicates with the computer. It's important mm -hmm. to have it on serial. If not, CPU speed doesn't really matter. This doesn't really matter. Keyboard layout, I don't think it really matters. Um, and then finally, we have the port. This one does matter a lot. On Windows, you will have COM ports, C-O-M. And on Mac, we have this. Mm -hmm. um, and here we need to select to which USB port our TNC is connected. And luckily, we don't have to figure out which magical USB port it is on the side of this computer, but it will just show it here. So if you've connected your TNC, it should just show 
something here with TNC 3.6 or like COM number three and then TNC 3.6 or two. So right. you can just click it. And now we can use the upload button, the little arrow at the top, and it should upload it to the TNC. And if this works, we know that we can start programming with it. And to know if it works, we can see here uploading. It says done uploading. Nothing happens, but that's logical. There were no instructions, mm -hmm. but it does work. So if it wouldn't work, like it would give you an alarm, your computer yeah. will break and exactly. the and world then you, will crash. Exactly. And then you just need to check this. This thing here at the bottom with all these random, with this random information tells you what's going wrong. And there's a lot of information on the internet helping you, but you just need to read this uh, if something goes wrong. So for instance, I would remove this bracket. Brackets are really important. Mm -hmm. Never, never just remove it. If I would try to upload it now, I'm not going to save it, but I am going to upload it. Uh, oh. We get like orange text and maydays and the computer's going to break, stuff like that. Arthur just broke the internet. Exactly. Um, I just need to read what it says here. And you probably won't understand a lot from what it says here. But if you Google these errors, there's always a lot of information. And this specific one says it expected a certain token before another token. And tokens are like the curly brackets and square brackets and everything. I have no idea what you're talking about. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. Uh, Google is your best friend when you're, when you're a new programmer. Cool. Okay, so, so, so what do we do then? We know now that it's working if yes. you are putting the brackets and how, how do I move forward from there? All right, so there's two things you can start with because on the one hand, we want to work with the LDR. So we need to see if this works. And on the other hand, we want to produce sound because we're synth designers in this case. Uh, so we can test if the sound's working. Yeah. Both are possible. Where do you want to start? Um, I think let's let's start first of all with seeing how this works, and then I can maybe explain how, um, like, what kind of uh, interaction I want with the instrument I have in my head. Maybe right. with um, VCB rack. Yeah. Um, do you have it installed? Yeah. Okay, great. So let's first of all start. Like, how do you know if this actually works? Good question. So this is, as I said, like a resistor, uh, which means it just blocks the flow of electricity. Um, and it doesn't give information and it's also analog and the word analog is important to remember here. So we have digital and analog mm -hmm. sensors, digital ones, uh, communicate with the computer or Arduino in this case through zeros and ones binary high and low signals. Mm -hmm. So and it's either, either on or off like mm -hmm. a button. Yeah. Okay. And then it just does it really fast and it's code and then this thing can understand it just like how all computers work just zeros and ones in sequence mm -hmm. which gives it information and there's all sorts of protocols every digital sensor works in its own way um, this one is analog and that's why we're starting with it because it's much easier because this just gives a certain amount of electricity okay um, so we're going to run electricity through it measure how much electricity is coming out of it and then we know how much light is on here okay which might sound fake now but if we show it it's always much easier um so to start with i said that this was an analog sensor so we need to connect it to an analog port this thing has ports specifically for analog sensors and also for digital sensors or digital output okay um, and this one is analog. So to figure out which one this is, I don't know this by heart. There's probably around 60 pins on here. So okay. um, we're going to use Google. Right. So the pins are these... Uh, All the small metallic... These things here. Yes. Can I just disconnect it and connect it? Yeah, of course. Would it matter? Okay. I don't so think I can so. just like, disconnect this. And then like the pins are these here. So if I would take this out without breaking it. It's gonna be really difficult. Here. Then it actually has pins. Can you focus? I think you can see it. Yeah. yeah. So these pins are basically connected to this 
Uh, chip? Chip, yeah. Right. Is this like the same chip that I have on my computer? It's but like weaker? Or? Mm, uh, it's different. It's different? It's okay. different. It's, it's, they're both chips. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see a bunch of chips here, but okay, cool. So, so it has all these pins and I, um, like, how do I know which pin is which? Right. So to Google, to figure that out, there's like this word you just need to remember and it's a pin out. Pin out. And a pin out shows for any microcontroller always where the pins are connected to on the big black chip. So if we Google, in my case, it's a TNC 3.6. So I will Google TNC 3.6 pin out. And I get these images. And oh, right. yeah. I just need to check because even though I typed in TNC 3.6. Yeah, but here it says actually 3.6. Yes, exactly. So this should be fine. This should also be fine. But then this image, this isn't a 3.6. Right. So that's just Google image search. So always check that you're looking at your microcontroller, even though you've Googled it correctly, might not show it correctly. Um, but this really looks like mine. And it's even from the TNC website itself. Um, and here we can see what all these pins are doing. So if I open it in a new tab, we can show it a little bit bigger. And here we have some PWM pins, which is something really cool. We have RX and TX pins and all the pins are numbered. So it's both sides have pins zero to 33, 32. It's actually like this. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I was talking about analog pins. And uh, as you can see, it doesn't say anywhere where it's a digital pin, but it does say A. And this A always stands for analog with pins. Okay. So, so it actually has quite a lot of analog pins. Exactly. Another thing that's really cool about the Teensy is where a regular Arduino usually has around four. Bigger ones have a bit more. Mm -hmm. The Teensy is tiny, but still, this one still has 17 analog ports, which right. is pretty amazing. Okay. Well, why, why does it matter? Why do I need analog uh, uh, pins? Because we need to measure the amount of electricity flowing through our LDR into the TNC. And only the analog pins can measure a variance in electricity. So a range. A range, exactly. Oh. So we're talking about the digital, which mm -hmm. is on or off. Right. So all the other digital pins will just give like either zero or maximum. Mm. And this analog pin can measure anything in between. Okay, cool. So it gives us a range, which is really nice because we don't want to know if there's light or no light on this, but we actually want to measure the amount of lights. Yeah, I think like uh, f uh, basically when I play a guitar, for instance, like I want to control the volume. I don't want it to be just like on or off. Exactly. I want it to be on different volumes, yeah. play sensitively and then create different variations of volume. That's yeah. So I can so. do this with analog, but I cannot do it with digital. Exactly. Digital is the on and off switch on your amp. Okay. For your guitar, guitar. Yeah. And your overdrive knob and your volume knob. Yeah. Are are all analog. Okay. So so if I want to create something with um, like controlling uh, frequency, like um, like knobs of on a on a synth. Yeah. Then I have to have I, like there is no way I can use the digital ones. No. Okay. It always has to do uh, like do you have do you have a knob yes. somewhere? Yes. Like these. Uh, no, I cannot. Okay, so it's like a potent uh, it's it's a potentiometer. So like it could be it could be here, and it could also be here, and it could be somewhere Anything in the middle. In yeah. And that is what the analog value is going to be. Yeah. I think I get it. And to score another confusing point, mm -hmm. there's also buttons that work digital. Ad animation of mind blowing here. We're, we're, not <laughs> we're not gonna explain that. Okay, but cool. So, so we need the analog one, and uh, we want to connect the LDR to one of the analog ones. If I understand correctly, I could actually use a zero. So, yep, like definitely. pin fourteen. Yep. So if I count here, fourteen, that would be. I'm not sure if you. It's. So it yeah, says 14. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So I need to count V in. 
ground GND, that's 3.3. And right after these, I have another... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The tenth pin. So, 1, 2... Actually, I am now on 4, so the 14th. Oh, this no, that's... Be... Oh, that's uh, so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... So that's A3, which is also fine. Let's use A3. Okay, let's use A A3, which is on here. I think so. So do I just, so we just plug it in? We just stick the LDR with one side into the line for A3. So this is the part where breadboards come in really okay. handy. Um, okay. What the other leg will, we're going to do in a bit. Okay, yeah. So... What I was talking about a bit earlier is usually we would have to solder this leg to one of the pins, which is really annoying because then if you do it wrong, you have to desolder it and then solder and desolder. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hassle. But then with a breadboard, you can just um, connect it by yeah, sticking it into the holes of the breadboard. Um, and there's just one thing to remember on how this connects. Because when we look at the breadboard, we can see that we have horizontal lines, like these, and also here. And we have vertical lines, these long ones, which are also marked. So here at the top, it will say plus, and it will say minus, and then this is minus again, and this is plus, I think. Um, and the way these horizontal and vertical lines work is that all the pins in a horizontal line, except for the ones over here. So everything from this middle line to this edge line, are all four are connected. So anything we stick in this hole is connected to that's connect that's in here. And then these vertical ones are connected vertically. So everything you put in the plus side is connected together, and anything you put in the minus side is connected together. Okay, I right? got it. Yeah. So um, it doesn't really matter if I connect it uh, here. No. I could also connect it here. Yeah. I could also connect it here, but I cannot connect it here. No, because then it's on the other this side. This is on the, the other side and it's connect. Okay, so I got it. So number 14, I have it now connected, but this is only one leg. What do I do with, with the other one? So it's always best to just Google how to wire it because there's a ton of different sensors. And unfortunately, we cannot explain them all. Um, so, where our previous magic word was pinout, our next magic word is going to be wiring. Or a wiring diagram, but wiring is enough. And we need the wiring of an LDR to a TNC in our case, but TNC is less used than an Arduino. So, I usually check Arduino diagrams because they're similar. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. LDR wiring Arduino. And now we get a ton of pictures with this one even has an LED on it and an LDR and this also. We just want to have the LDR and just want to read from it. Um, I know by heart that this is a, a perfect image. If this is your first time and you're using a different sensor, just go to the page from the image. The page will explain why this image is there, if it's correct, what kind of code they're using. Yeah. Uh, anything is on the line. Yeah, it's, it's part of the learning, but okay, so this actually looks pretty s simple. So 3.3 volt goes to one of the legs, and then we have another leg that goes into the resistor, and then from the resistor into the ground. So yeah. that basically means that both of them are connected to the ground. No, uh, one is connected. So one is connected to a volt, and the other one goes to ground, and also to an analog oh okay analog yeah pin. yeah okay so analog pin okay so the analog pins and we can use actually next to our 3.3 volts is, is a9 an okay and next to that there's an a8 um so any of these would work okay so i just connected it to a9 awesome which will be like this um so this a9 means analog a stands for analog and it's to measure like the variance instead yeah. of on or off yeah so 3.3 is the full voltage yes and then the a9 is going to be whatever the resistance of this how many how much light goes in yes. this is going to determine if it's 3.3 or lower than 3.3 yes and if you would have connected to like a digital pin um, it'll be just an on off yeah 
with a lot of light it will say on and with not a lot of light it would just go to off and there's nothing in between which yeah. isn't really interactable <coughs> yeah um and then finally there's this weird extra connection to ground you were talking about with the air one yeah with a resistor so. um and the easiest way to explain this is to see our analog port as a bucket and into this bucket flows electricity and it can measure the amount and um usually it will just work like this as we've now connected it but mm -hmm. sometimes the analog port doesn't lose its electricity so it's like a bucket and it fills up so we're not measuring the amount of electricity flowing through it but it's just electricity going in it fills up to maximum value mm -hmm. and that's it and it gets Which stuck is, there so then you don't you don't really have any interaction you know it will nothing just would happen nothing would no happen. it will just stay at max so it will just say i'm on it's oh, okay so we connect this resistor and we poke a little hole into the bucket so that the electricity going in and this is the connection to the ground okay so this yep. this is a bit confusing because now it actually looks like r1 is going through and connecting to the the blue one it but is, it's not yeah it is connected to the blue one but it's not like yeah it's going across which is weird it's going across yeah okay so that's that's good to know so i need then to have my leg uh, a9 it was and then connecting it directly to the ground which is the gnd which is the second second one. pin yeah second pin okay so now i have and because of connected. the magic breadboard it's really easy to connect everything together because it's just the horizontal line next to the analog yeah pin which is all, all connected. Okay. Can we can we now see if it works? Let's hope so. So we're going to connect it to the computer, which is the easy step. Got it. And we're going to go to our. Oh, hold on, it's not connected at all. Arduino, Arduino, teeny, Arduini. Arduini teeny, teeny tiny teeny software. Um, so we go to our teeny Arduino. And we have our empty sketch. This is last time, which, which we tried to upload to see if everything was working mm -hmm. correctly. Um, and in here, we're going to put some code. And we have code that we need to put inside the setup and inside the loop. Yeah. Um, the difference between these two is that the loop will go on indefinitely, uh, repeatedly, as it says here. And the setup only runs once. So you plug in this to the power. It starts up your program that you've written in your IDE, your Arduino tool. And it will execute anything that's within these curly brackets, so the opening and the closing one. Mm -hmm. But it will only do it once. And then in here, it's a loop. So it will first do this. Then it will do this, secondly. It, first. it does a third, first, and then it does a second. Second, and then... Uh, finishes here, but it doesn't finish it. It's a loop. So after this, it will just go back to this, do this, do this, and it will do this indefinitely. As long as this thing has power, it okay. will do this. Okay. And it will do it super fast. Like super fast, like once in a second? Oh, much faster, much faster. It's I, I don't actually know, it depends per microcontroller, but there's a, a crystal inside it, which determines the clock speed. Okay. And it will go, uh, like hundreds of times per second. Okay. Okay. So, so let me just get it right. If I'm using, if I'm putting something in the setup, it's just going to be happening once when I connect it to the power. Yes. So what kind of things would I put there in setup? Um, so, uh, things to set up your environment, sort of say. So if this was a synthesizer, which we're going to do later with audio mm -hmm. and, um, we have a couple of oscillators. Within the setup, we could state which waveform the oscillators are playing. So we create our patches, all the cables, where they're going, because we're not really moving those cables. Inside. Okay, 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 okay. And then everything with buttons and knobs and anything that's interactable yeah. is going to be put in the loop because we need to check every time if this has been changed, because otherwise it will just read it once. And then afterwards, nothing will happen when you rotate the knob. Okay, so anything that I want to interact with goes to loop. And anything yes. that I just need to set up once goes into setup. Yes. It's 
literal. Yeah. Okay, cool. And it's really important to determine for yourself which does not need to be in the loop. Mm -hmm. Because the more there's in the loop, since it's a linear circle, um, the more steps are in the circle, the longer it's going to take to go back to the first step. Yeah. So if the first step is reading your knob, and then afterwards it's going to do another thousand steps, it will take these thousand steps of time before it goes back to the knob. Yeah, so I could actually see uh, experience latency. Yeah. And we don't like that. We don't like latency. We don't like latency. Okay, cool. So what do we do then? How do I how do I uh, see if this is working now? It is connected. Yes. So we need to start by um, communicating these values to something we can see because we are uploading the program to this thing and then it's going to run on there. But it doesn't have a screen, so there's nothing we can see. Mm -hmm. So we need to send the values back from there to our laptop, and we're going to do this with the serial monitor. It's, okay. a, it's a console where we can read it. And we need to start by telling our computer and our Arduino or microcontroller mm -hmm. uh, how fast we're going to be talking. So this sounds really weird, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a certain speed, which we can state anything. I usually use 9,600. So now we're sending this code to here and this piece of code, we'll actually tell it, not only send it to here, but also send it back there so we could read it. Yeah. Okay. And then I just need to remember this needs to be 9,600. Yes. Okay. There's also, if you look at tutorials online, some people might also use 11,500, which okay. is a faster speed. Okay. Doesn't it, really But matter. it really doesn't matter. Okay, cool. Um, and that's actually for now, the only thing we need to put into setup because everything else is just reading our sensor. Okay. Which Let's we see. need to do every time. So to do this, we need to read and to read is with analog read and the capitalization is really important to get right. If it's wrong, it's not going to turn orange. So orange means that our, mm -hmm. uh, that the code editor recognizes this as a function that the Arduino has or the mm -hmm. microcontroller has. Okay. Analog read. We put the nice round brackets, the same as with this begin function and the setup and everything mm -hmm. as these. And then we need to specify which analog pin we're going to be reading from. Right. Yeah, we have A9. We have A9, exactly. Oh, and it'll also change the color. Because it recognized it. And mm. um, this sometimes it doesn't change color, but it's still correct with the A ports, which okay. is weird. So now we have analog read from this pin which is cool, but we need to send it to this monitor um, so that we can actually you know, receive it and understand it, mm -hmm. see it. And to do this, we're going to print it. So we're going to use serial.print. So serial begin was to initiate it. A serial print is to send it, to, to print it. Mm -hmm. And we can do print or print line. And I like to do print line because print means it's just going to be next to each other in an infinite line. And if you put a lot of numbers next to each other, you're not sure which number it is. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if we do line, it's going to be a new number every time. Okay. Uh, and again, the round brackets. We put our analog read inside the round brackets because we want to send this analog value. Then we're going to close it. So we have an open and a close. So an open and a close for this one. So there. It's two separate things, opening and closing. And this is where most programming mistakes are, are made. <laughs> okay. Not opening and closing. And then finally, we need to end the line with this. Okay, so I say serial print of analog read A9. Yes. Okay, that's pretty literal. Yeah. It's like you're writing a sentence. Yeah. Okay, so... Write the number that you're seeing, write the value that you're seeing on leg A9. Yeah. Okay. And if we're going to run this, as I said, this thing, because there's not a lot in the loop, it's going to run this a couple of hundred times per second. It's going to be insane. Um, which isn't really helpful because we have this serial monitor and it's just going to fill up within let, let, let's an see. instance. Can, can, can you show me? Yes. And it's going to be compiling, drum roll, uploading. It says done uploading, so that's good. 
Okay. So now we can check our serial monitor. Yeah. And we see this. Numbers. Yeah. Look. And it's really fast. And when you put your finger on it. It's yeah, that's really like low. 100. And, and we, that's 500. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really fast. It doesn't it need really to fast. be really that fast. And if you wait long enough, it's going to crash. Oh, because really? the serial monitor has too many values in it. It just it cannot keep up. Okay. So if you're debugging your code, just debugging, so just testing values, it's smart to use a delay. Okay. And delay is again quite literal. It just stops the loop. So we had the circle running yeah. linearly. And then here in milliseconds, we can tell it, okay, hold here for, for this amount. Milliseconds. Which is half a second. Half a second. Okay. And which, then write another number. And then go back to the top. Okay. Hold for half a second and then continue. Yeah. Um, but don't use this in your regular piece of code because again, a ton of latency, half a second of latency. That's huge. Yeah. Okay. That's, that we'll, we'll get there later. It's just for now so that we can pause, so that we can just read the values at a normal speed. Mm -hmm. This is this is much more friendly. So now we yeah. So finger. this is one twenty, and then this is five hundred. Yeah, and then we can give it even more light. Should be able to go all the way up to. Oh yeah, that's like nine hundred. Nine hundred sixty-nine. That's no, not going any higher. Yeah. Okay, but nine hundred is like the highest. Maybe that's okay. because of the resistor. No. No. And then we can try to make it as dark as possible. Ooh, what? 50, 30, 30. 28. So, okay. Uh, five, four. Uh, it's going to be really hard to make it zero. Okay. Um, but, but four is actually pretty low. Four is actually pretty low. So, these analog sensors or these analog ports, as you can see, it doesn't say voltage. It's not saying zero volts. No, it's just numbers. Volts. It's just numbers. Um, and that's how the analog pins work okay. on an Arduino or a microcontroller. I keep saying Arduino because the word Arduino. Um, this will give, and I always write, like to write it in code, minimum is zero, of course. Maximum is 1,023. Okay, yeah. So any, an, any sensor connected to an analog pin or any analog pin will give a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 1023 knobs and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it might be that the resistance on your knob is, is so high that it won't reach the 1023 or so low. Okay. Um, but this is like the maximum range you can get. It's always smart to test because if you're creating interaction, you don't want to use absolute values, but you want to see what happens if it's actually maximum okay so yeah so what do we what do we do now now i know that this is working i see the numbers in my um serial print serial monitor serial monitor okay yep. and now i want to assign this to the volume of my oscillator how how do i even create sound here um firstly we need to be able to output sound from our teensy to uh cool speakers speakers yes to do this we have a, a mini jack <laughs> mini jack i uh, have to believe it doesn't me, like it's you a mini here jack. here's the mini jack you see there we go um, and we jack. can connect our mini jack cable from our speakers to it oh my god um, there we go like this can we now listen to stuff probably not Okay. Unfortunately not. But the cool thing about uh, sound is this is always a bit magical. At least it was for me. You plug it into your phone and suddenly the speakers know what to do. Mm -hmm. But it's actually just three wires. It's a ground wire, a left right wi a, a wire for the left speaker, and a wire for the right speaker. It's yeah, so this is like left, right, and ground. Yeah, and in here are just three wires inside this cable. Yeah. So to connect it to our Teensy, we could just stick three wires and duct tape it to this but it's not going to be very stable. No. So that's why we use the mini jack. So we plug in the mini jack somewhere on our cool breadboard. It is moving. Okay, yeah. And then, as I said, we need to connect it to the left speaker, the right speaker, and the ground. So to figure this out, we check our Teensy pinout again, as always. Um, and we need to connect it to left and right. But it doesn't really say left and right speaker on here. 
but what we are looking for is the DAC, the DAC. It might be that your TNC only has a single DAC, um, which is okay, then it's just mono sound. So you connect your single sound output to both the left and the right channel, and we'll just get it to both speakers. Uh, this 3.6 is a bit more fancy, um, and it has two ducks. And if we look at this image, we can actually see them over here, duck one and duck zero. And we as designers are gonna determine which one is left and which one is right. For now, we just wanna connect them to our uh, micro jack, mini jack. Yeah, mini jack. Mini jack. Um, and we have these cool cables. Okay. Um, yeah, these and are gonna be... a lot of mini jacks might have different connections. You might even have a different one than we have. But again, the word pinout is magical. So find your um, mini jack uh, input uh, where you bought it, figure out what the pinout is, and then you can see the should be able to understand ground and then line in for one and line in for the other. I can actually see it is actually touching this. So I know that this is basically like touching this. This and this are the same when it is connected. Yeah, this is definitely ground because it's touching this part. The bottom one. And this one is definitely the hot one. So this is the one that I need to uh, connect into the duck, right? Yeah, so both of those can go to the different ducks so that the pointy one and the middle yeah, one. If, if this is stereo, but this is yeah. mono. Okay. Okay. But as long as you get the ground connected, right, it's this is fine. Mono, right? Um, yeah, all the rest is connected. Yeah, yeah, it is mono. It's just, yeah, it's it is It's mono. connected to both things, but it's mono. Yeah. yeah, it's just that if you disconnect it like this, then this wire can be sent to somewhere else. Ah. So it can be, um, right. yeah, you could, you could create different routing like this. Um, Send stuff. Yeah, but we are looking at the numbers here. Yeah, so we need to connect the ground. That's the most important one to have correct. So connect one, two, three, four. Ooh, how, how uh, let's do the ground here. That's much easier. OK, so I have ground. Uh, actually, that's the other way around. I need to double check. It's like this. Yes. And then ground is top. and then ground is here. Left. Yeah. yeah. And I can connect this leg directly into somewhere here. For instance, like that line. And I know that this is my ground. Yep. And okay. then we need the the ducks. Just going to use another cable, another color. And the duck is... If we count from the from the SD, from the bottom. is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so number eight and number nine are ducks. Okay, so I can just connect it to number eight, and then I connect this cable to wherever the uh, plus is. Yes. So now I'm just going to connect this guy. With the ground to the blue one, and then the other two. Like this. You just need to move. And I need to move this guy to here. Yes. Right. So if it's a bit fidgety, it that's is. It always is the problem with breadboards and mini jacks. Yeah. It is a bit no. so more stable that way. Yeah, for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. So now I have duck zero connected and the ground hopefully hopefully we'll see otherwise we'll see. we have backups of course um okay so if i connect the cable now we don't hear anything but that's logical because, because we, we didn't put any code in we have no instructions no. telling the tnc to produce any sound yeah um uh, so I think that's the next step to yeah. create. And I think this is definitely not going to work for us. So we might need to solder some 
cables, cables to, to make here. it longer. Yeah. But that's going to be fine. We can always touch it and then here. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Never mind. This is not going to work. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next step is creating like a super simple piece of code where you can make no mistakes or almost no mistakes to test if your sound is working. Because if you're instantly going to be trying to put the LDR into the frequency, into the distance, it's going to be too big. And then to determine where your problem is, it's going to be really hard. Um, so we always want to make like start as small as possible and then build layers upon layers so that we know in which layer our mistake has been made. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we go to the Teensy website first, and then it's this URL. And it's a really cool tool to create uh, synthesizer patches. So like all the cables you patch around your synthesizer, this is sort of similar. Um, and as I said, we're going to start out really simple. So we're going to scroll all the way down to synth and we're going to use a basic waveform without any modulation capabilities, just waveform. Uh, and this waveform can be a sine or a sawtooth or anything that we're going to put into the setup. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then we need to output it. So we're going to scroll all the way up to output. And here it depends which thing you have. So if you have a 3.6, you use ducks because we have multiple. Yeah. If you have a uh, TNC with just a single duck, so I think it's a 3.1 or something. 3.2, yeah. 3.2, you need to use single duck. So just this one, 3.2 or 3.5, or of course the 3.6 because it has two and also one. Mm -hmm. And if you have a TNC without any ducks, you need to use the audio shield. Yeah, but that is something different. That's so, something different. Yeah. Yeah. So for now, we can just assume you have this. And then we can see that the ducks, there's an in one over here in the exp uh, explanation panel, mm -hmm. which means this top wire. And it is an in two, which is this one, which stands for audio channel right and audio channel left. Um, we just connected duck zero. So I'm going to assume it's this one. But I'm not sure. So I'm just going to connect them both with a wire to our oscillator because I'm not sure which duck is which one. If I just connect both, it's always yeah. going to work. Okay, and a, and a, and a duck is a digital to analog conversion, conversion, right? Yes. So we have these numbers, zeros and ones, and this thing is basically doing some magic in the background because a lot. creating a waveform is not as simple as it may seem, as it may seem here. Um, what makes this super valuable for musicians or for people who create musical instruments or sound experiences is the fact that a lot of the code is hidden in the background and what we're doing here is we're creating we're just saying we want to use a waveform and this has a waveform and it also has a digital to analog conversion uh, con converter uh, which we can connect directly to and we can create complex patches, simple patches, and this is just a very simple patch where we have a waveform going into the converter that we could actually hear. So what we're going to do now is um, export this. Yes, okay. exactly. So we created this patch. And the reason we did it over here is because then this tool creates all the complex code. So if we click on the export panel, there's like a lot of yeah, code here. Mm -hmm. Um, which we can copy with command C or control C and paste at the top. So above the setup hmm. over here. Okay. Um, and this is, as you can see, including all these libraries, all the code that's running in the background. So that these, these files have all cool stuff in it and it's all being created in the background. We don't really know anything. And then here we have our GUI Two, so that's this thing and the patches that have been created. So we see our waveform that we made. We see our ducts, the analog output, and then we see the connection. So a patch cord going from the waveform to the duct and another patch cord going from the waveform also to the duct, which is exactly similar as we see here, waveform to duct, yeah. waveform to duct. Yeah, this is just visual and there it's just in written Code. language. Yeah. So it's it's nice. A lot of people like to work visual instead of in code. So. Mm -hmm. And especially when you get big 
connections. It's much easier this way. Yeah, but I could actually just change the numbers here and it would be as if I did it in the editor. Yeah. Okay, cool. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now, again, we need to do some setup because we need to yeah, set up our thing. And same as before, we're going to add our serial.begin um, to create the, the speed of the serial communication. Mm -hmm. And we need to include a new line of code, which is called audio memory. Um, and this one is actually pretty cool. This is also some teensy background magic audio memory. Um, and what it does is it reserves a piece of the microcontroller's memory just for creating the waveforms and the audio and everything. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, this loop was linear, but if the sound was created in the same loop, that would mean that if the loop was really slow, we get distorted sound because the waveform isn't smooth anymore. Mm -hmm. But this audio memory reserves like a sort of separate loop, like a buffer, which focus on getting the, the proper sound to the output. So okay. that even if we would delay the loop with 15 milliseconds, the mm -hmm. sound wouldn't change at all. Okay. The, the amount you need to reserve depends on the size of your sketch. So usually if you start an audio memory of 20 is fine and it's more than enough memory. Mm -hmm. And the bigger your sketch gets, the bigger this memory number gets. But when you're there, you have enough experience to figure out how, how big this number has to be. Okay. For now, 20 is fine. Okay. And then finally, as I said before, we need to specify the type of uh, waveform we want to see. Mm -hmm. And to do this, it's always, I always like to look at documentation so I don't make any mistakes. And here we can see all the functions that are connected to the waveform. So if we click on docs, we can see anything about any, any information about the docs. And if we click on our waveform, we can see all the information about the waveform. And here it has a begin function where we can specify the waveform mm -hmm. and also a more complex begin function where we can also set the level and the start frequency, which I think is really helpful. Yeah, that's um, we could actually use the LDR for controlling the frequency, for instance. Yes. Or actually the level the frequency function or the amplitude also with the LDR. Yeah. yeah. But we could just use the begin. No. And yeah, for now, we're just going to use the begin. But then if we, if we put the value of the LDR in the level, we could basically control only with one line of code the level of the of the, the oscillator. Um, so not with the begin function, because the begin is just for setting it up. So having like a starting point. Ah, OK. So that is what you would put in the setup. Yes. But you cannot put it in the loop. Or you it's can, but you, you wouldn't want to do that. It's weird. Yeah. OK, 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 OK. So we're going to set it up as a wave, as a certain waveform with a certain starting frequency and a certain starting amplitude. Yes. And then within the loop, we can change it, but it needs to start I got it. somewhere. Okay. So I'm just going to copy this entire word and everything in it. So I know in which order I need to use it. Mm -hmm. And then we need to connect it to our specific waveform. So we see here our waveform had the name waveform one. Yeah. Not really a good name, but yeah. That's what it is for now. Mm -hmm. And here it also says waveform one. So we're just going to write waveform one. And then the same as with this serial begin, where it has a dot yeah. to connect this begin function to serial. Mm -hmm. We're also going to use a dot begin over here. But instead of this number, we need to put in a level, a frequency, and a waveform. Okay. Again, it's, it's like a sentence. So waveform one, begin wave, waveform one. Yes. With a certain level, a certain frequency, a certain waveform. Yes. Okay. All with commas separated from each other and then the opening and closing uh, brackets. And to know what to put in, it's always good to just check the documentation again. So here for amplitude, it says change the amplitude set to zero to turn off the signal. And it doesn't specify the maximum value, but I believe after Googling it's it, once, zero to one, right? it's probably zero to one. Yeah, okay. So a level of 0 0.5 seems more than enough to hear it. Yeah. Then we need to pick a nice frequency. Let's do 440. 440. Yeah. And then finally, we need to pick a waveform. But just writing sign won't work. It's, no, it's but we can go words. to the documentation again. Exactly. And then when we scroll down, 
we see supported right. waveforms mm -hmm. and the way we need to type them. So if we want to use like a sawtooth, we just copy this. Okay. And paste it over here. And now it's light blue instead of black. Yeah. Which means it understood this. Yeah, it recognizes it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And that's it. So since we're not changing the sound, we just want to know if we can hear it. This we can is just put it in the setup. And then listen to it. And mm -hmm. if it works, we can try to include our LDR and everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to save it. Yeah, I could save it already. Why not? Projects, LDR, synth, and then the basic wave form. Right. Save. So uh, again, we need to wait for the compiling and then uploading. And the first time you do this, it might take some time because there's these giant libraries and it needs to be packed and translated into a different language and then sent to the Teensy. Um, and it takes some time. Troubleshooting 101. Check if your speakers are actually working. They need power. Okay, so I just connected my speakers and yes. I disconnected the adapter here because it's not really working well with my uh, breadboard. But I can, I mean, I just have two two wires and I know that this one, the, the bottom one, is my ground. Yeah. So I know this blue one is my ground. So you connect it to the... Just going to touch it like this. And then I should touch here and, and nothing yeah. happens. Noise. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Here we go. Cool. This is interactive. I could I could make music like this. Definitely. Get a nice beat going with your cables. It's almost a I died. sandstorm. <laughs> okay okay now i want to make uh, music with this how do i how do i do that now i know that this is working so, um that's good so now we knew know our sound is working our ldr is working mm -hmm. and now we can try to combine them but again we want to always keep our working layer okay can i can can we just uh, now just copy this a few times and and have like different frequencies like would this work if i just copy this paste it and put like so. 220, um, 110 as frequencies and maybe the volumes take them a bit down. Well, it's still the same oscillator. Oh, right. So I need to put now four oscillators in my editor, Right. in the browser. So here we can do like, uh, I think you could paste. No, so now here we can just with synth we can get like more and more and more and more and more. Okay. And we need to connect all of these to the output. Can I just connect all of them to the output like this? No, I won't. As you can see, it won't connect. We can remove the wire and then connect one oscillator to the left channel and the other oscillator to the right channel. Right, yeah, but, but we don't want multiple. to do that. No, okay. Um, if we want to connect multiple oscillators, we need to mix them with a mixer. Right. And do we have Same a mixer with here? a synthesizer? We can add a mixer if we want to. Okay. Uh, here, mixer, mixer. Okay, now, cool. suddenly we have four things going into one into the mixer. Like one. so, two, three, and four, and this has a single output, which can be then connected to here. And I have a lot of woo together. Okay, so then I would export this. Yes, we do the export. Copy, paste. Copy it, uh, paste it at the top. I replace the code I had before. Yes, yeah, so we can keep serial begin and, and audio And now memory. it gives it different numbers. So like waveform 1, 2, 3, 4. So I could two, just change this. 3, four. 4. Change the volumes of them because they cannot exceed 1. So let's just do 0 0.1 for each of them. I think it doesn't matter. I think they can also it, it, all be... It, it will probably distort. Hmm. But uh, I don't know, maybe not. But okay, um, so then, uh, yeah, let's just 
880 and 110. Right. And let's just run this and see what happens. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. It seems we have mixed a lot of sawtooths. Yeah. Sounds really weird. <laughs> but it but, works. But it works. Okay, cool. So now I have a bunch of oscillators playing at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. And I cannot really control their volume unless I do this. I can like make some sort of... Yeah. Okay, so LDR. How do I now connect this? Right. So we have this working piece of code. And mm -hmm. we had a working piece of code. And as I said before, we want to work in layers. And always keep a working layer so that if we make a mistake, um, we can go back to something that was working. Yeah. So again, I'm going to close this. And I'm going to create a new piece of code. And now we're going to combine everything we had. So we're going to open from recent our LDR code, which was this one. We're going to open. Oh open from this the basic waveform and i think i'm going to remove the mixer again because it's a bit uh if we're just going to change one frequency it's going to be really hard to hear if it works oh you should be able to hear it okay and then we'll, for now we'll keep it like this and then we're going to combine these two pieces of code which is actually pretty easy so everything that's above, above here above the setup needs to be above our new setup mm -hmm. if it's similar to here we don't we don't want any duplicates mm -hmm. but luckily for now this is empty so everything we have over here mm -hmm. we can just grab from here to here copy and paste then we go further and we go to the setup and then everything that's inside the setup here needs to be also in our setup over here and the same with this bus, but as I said, no duplicates. So serial begin 9600 is already here. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to put it in here. So we're going to skip that one and then also copy paste anything that's over here. And I'm already placing Inside. here our resistor and LDR. Right. So if you forgot how to connect it, go back to your wiring diagram, check it again. Uh, and try to connect it again. Uh, no, we'll save this later. Um, so now we have everything that was in this setup and this setup and this setup. And then finally, we want to get everything that was in the loop. Paste it into our new loop. And for now, that's it. So this doesn't yet control Without the delay, right? Do we need that delay? For now, just to see if it works. Okay. So um, it won't won't do anything with the sound yet, because we're oh, not, right. yeah. we're not telling the code to do anything with the sound. Mm -hmm. But we first want to see if we've wired it correctly, because we've disconnected their LDR, we put it back in. So now first we're going to check: is it still connected to A9? Mm -hmm. Do we still get values? And do we also get sound? So are these two separate layers working together? Yeah. Let's see. We see numbers. In the yeah. monitor and they do change and do we also hear our amazing sound it is amazing Are you it's, yeah. yeah here we go oh okay so okay. we get sound we get numbers yeah awesome now let's add the numbers to the sound what do you want to change um yeah i think we'll just do waveform um uh, one Okay, we're going to get waveform one into the loop and we're going to remove the delay because yeah. it creates latency. Yeah. We're going to put two slashes in front of the serial print. We might want to review it later to see what the values are, but for now, there's not real use to it. So we're going to put our waveform into the loop and then we're going to change um, the frequency. Cool, the frequency. Yeah. So this is also from the same, from the library. That's from the documentation. Exactly. That's why it got orange. Right. So it's again with the dot and a frequency yeah. for the amplitude, dot, amplitude. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, frequency, then um, brackets. Round brackets. And, and then A9. We could do this, but 
as we have written down in our code over here. Mm -hmm. Now we have a frequency changing from zero to 1023. We actually want to redefine the range. For now, we could test this just to see if it, if it works, mm -hmm. working with the layers. So let's see if this layer works. But we might want to change the range because especially with the volume, our volume is from zero to one. So if you would want to change the volume with this, it won't work because it's from zero to 1023. Okay, I'll need another pair of hands. With some light. <laughs> Not sure if you can hear it, but we're really happy. Sounds like the THX intro, like... Cool. Congratulations. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this works and it actually sounds really cool. Um, but uh, yeah. As I said, you might want to change the range. So you might want to like specify it in the way that you like it. Uh, yeah, it would actually be great if we um, maybe take away some of these waveforms, just keep one and just control the volume. And I would actually not change the range at the moment. I would just try to see how it sounds like with this range. Okay. And then maybe define the uh the ambient light here as my zero would that make sense so then only when i bring more light it would actually amplify yeah definitely. can i do something like this definitely okay yeah um can we just keep the same patch we just... can actually because what i just did in the patch was i just removed the begin yeah as we said before, so we're not we... beginning the, the the other three so all the os all the other oscillators are turned off yeah there's still a mixer and everything's going to the mix and everything, but some yeah, yeah, of the yeah. oscillators are not beginning, so nothing is happening. Okay, so we have only one oscillator playing a sawtooth yeah. on 440 hertz. hertz. With an amplitude of 0 0.1. Yeah. Um, and with the amplitude, which is hard to read in the documentation, but as we said before, it's probably a, a value from 0 to 1. Yeah. Uh, yeah, change the amplitude to set zero to turn signal off. off. Yeah, okay. So, um, so do we just need to put here waveform one dot um, volume to amplitude, and then okay, so yeah, okay. But now it's a value from zero to one thousand and twenty-three. Yeah, let, let's see, let's see. Which isn't from zero to one, so this is probably just gonna distort. Let's see. Yeah. It's just super loud. It's just super loud. Okay. Because it's never below one. Right. Because it's never below one. No, it's yeah. either zero. Even or even when higher. I had my, my hand over this, it was only like it was four. Yeah, four. So I need to figure out how to get now the nine hundred that we had there into below one. Yes, exactly. Um, the simplest thing to do right now would be dividing it by uh, 1,000. That makes sense. Because our maximum value we actually got was 900 something. Yeah. And our lowest was four. Um, so 900 divided by 1,000 would be 0 0.9. Right, okay. Um, but let's try. So this should already get a little bit more interactable. Nothing happens. Maybe divided by 500? Um, yeah. Or what we could even do is that's why we commented this so we can get this one back. Oh yeah, to evaluate. Yeah, okay. And yeah. then evaluate what the values are mm -hmm. to better understand what's happening within here. Mm -hmm. We just print it over here. So now we would see zero. Yeah, zero, it's, zero, it's zero. zero the whole time. All the time, doesn't matter. Right. 
and now it's also zero yeah. but yeah. why is it always zero um and this is something i always forget so i can do really cool and tell, say that it's like a, a learning thing mm. but I actually made a boo-boo <laughs> <laughs> um in programming we have integers and floats floats are numbers that can have a decimal value yeah integers cannot and we are now dividing it by an integer which means it cannot be a decimal okay so it cannot be zero point something which means it will always be either a zero or one yeah or another number but, but if we not divide it by 1000 but if we divided it by 1000 dot zero f Suddenly the computer is like, oh, decimals. Sure, I can do this. Okay. Um, and this is really confusing. That's why I always forget. Okay, okay. Let's so if that. we would now upload this. Let's see. And check our monitor. We can see the values. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. So now we have volume control with the LDR. Yeah. Cool. Is this really the professional way of doing this or? Not like... really, because if we're being really strict, for instance, with this button, mm -hmm. the maximum value is going to be 1023. Yeah. So how do I make this super accurate? Yes. So. If we divided 1023 by 1000, we won't get a number below one. So it's going to be distorted again. Mm -hmm. So therefore we need to map our values to be other values. So let's say we want to uh, change the frequency now, which mm. is, I think, uh, also fun to do. So we're going to put this one gray again, so it's not going to be used. And we're going to go back to waveform one dot frequency and instead of having like a huge range of frequencies we could say we only want to change from 100 to 500 would this sound nice sure sure All right cool so we even though the computer reads zero we want to have 100 and yeah. even though the computer reads 1023 we want to have 500 so we're going to create a variable, a, a place to store something. That's it. It's just so that we can store a new number. Okay. And we're going to store an integer, the thing I was just talking about, integers and floats. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be a decimal. So we're going to store a round number. We would do int mapped frequency. This is just a name I figure, I, I, I think of. You can also call it pancakes. Okay. Let's but, call it pancakes. Okay. It's really confusing if you're going to write your code full of pancakes and, <laughs> and poffertjes and stroopwafels. Um, but uh, yeah, so usually use a logical name, but pancakes is more fun. Okay, let's do pancakes for now. So we have our pancakes variable and we're going to store our number into this box labeled pancakes. Okay. And as I said, we were going to use map to map the values to be something And else. map is only for integers. Yeah, it only gives back integers. Okay. Um, and we're going to start with telling where our values are currently starting and ending. Yeah. So currently we have a minimum value of zero, a maximum value of 1023. Mm -hmm. And we are going to change it to 100 to 500. Okay. And that's it. Now inside pancakes, magic is happening uh almost magic is happening because we also need to specify where the values are coming from so okay. all the way to the beginning we're going to put our red values like so okay now this section makes more sense yes exactly so now the map receives something from the ldr let's say 400 um, and it knows okay 400 is something in between here somewhere in between here mm -hmm. And I need to put it at the right position in between here. Between these two. Okay. And it uh, does bibbidi bobbidi boop And then it saves it inside pancakes. Okay. So can we call pancakes uh, uh, volume? 
or um, what what is frequency so let's just call it frequency but now it turns orange because frequency yeah, so is maybe already frequency being used. range frequency range right okay. Okay, so we have a box called frequency range, and that is the accurate mapping of the values here, rather than just like whatever this gives me. Yes. It's now going to be between the numbers that I define. Yes, as a designer, the thing that you choose that it should yeah, sound yeah. like. Okay, cool. And then we put the box, so we empty the box in frequency. Yeah. So this. So the frequency is frequency range, and frequency range is, is a mapping of a nine between 100 and 500. Yes. Cool. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. So. So it will never go lower than a hundred. A hundred. And it will never just, go higher uh, than five hundred. Not yeah. sure how good your hearing is, but probably not low. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, but frequency is a, is a bit um, like. I think that what would be interesting to do is to actually have a bunch of these um, set up to a certain frequency. So then we can turn them on and off, like almost like a keyboard. Cool. A light keyboard. Yeah, like a light keyboard. Uh, then we, maybe we can create some sort of a box for it and like you could put fingers in different ways. Like I could totally see like my son playing with this. Like we put a bunch of like 12 of them, for instance, in different places. And it's just on, and he needs to turn them off by right. putting all the fingers there. Yeah. And maybe like counting with it, or I don't know, making some sort of a game out of this. You could even make it in the shape of a flute, because the flute has right. the holes. Yeah. And then without blowing, you can play it. Yeah. It's like a magic flute. It's a magic flute. It's a magical digital flutey. Synth flute. Yeah. Okay. Um, should we do this now? <laughs> Should we take a break? I think we're gonna take a break. break. Bye. Lunch is over. It's it's darker. It's almost the end of the day. Uh, what we did is we plugged four LDRs. We just multiplied everything by four. So four LDRs, four resistors. Um, pull down resistors. Pu four pull down resistors exactly. They pull electricity. Pull down. Um, but there aren't four ground lanes on your TNT, and that's where the breadboard's vertical lanes come in. So, as we talked about earlier in the video, early in the day, the vertical lines are all connected together. So we can create like a ground line where you can connect a ton of grounds or like grounds for sensors together. And we also did the same with the positive line because one LDR, one side of the LDR just needed volt and the other needed to be to the analog port and the pull down resistor. So now the volts are just all connected to the same site, which doesn't matter because it's all the same volts. Yeah, so this is 3.3, it goes into the plus here. And then all these legs connect directly to the 3.3. While these legs are connected to the ground this is also connected to the ground which is going to be connected to our plug to the speaker and then this connects to here which connects to here which connects to the ground here so all this mess here is to just make sure that everything is grounded yes there is a little thing that we had to do that's a bit um over the complexity of this video which is uh, if statements that we added um, and we're not going to discuss in the code here. However, you can download this code and make this work as is. Just download it from the link below. Um, what we're going to show now is how this actually works. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> well, you need oh, to well, plug it. Each of these we assigned an oscillator to. And each of these oscillators is assigned a different frequency. 
we're not changing the frequency at all. The only thing we're changing is the volume. And only when it gets really dark on the sensor yeah. is when the volume gets high enough for us to hear. So it looks like they're almost buttons, but actually his fingers are hovering above it. My hands are shaking. <laughs> Okay, that's it for today. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us, and um, good luck building your own stuff. Curious what you're going to be doing and what you're going to be assigning for uh, for these LDRs or knobs, because basically a knob is exactly the same thing. Just instead of controlling it with light, you're controlling it with the potentiometer, yes. with the value on the potentiometer. Um, but it's, it works the same as with an analog port. The reading is the same with the knob. You can also use the map function. So if you're planning on using any different analog sensor, just look up the wiring diagram on how to wire it to an analog pin. But besides that, the code is exactly the same. You could even use the code we wrote and have in the description. Use it with different analog pins. You can even, instead of these LDRs, just have knobs going like, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Super cool. Uh, yeah, we are going to make some more videos like this. Um, let us know if you want to, if you want us to make uh, certain videos on certain functions, or if you have ideas for instruments you want to build. Um, let us know in the comments below, and we'll do our best to get to these videos at a certain point in the near future. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Till next time.